All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from beautiful blue sky to San Diego. I'm delighted to be joined from London in the UK by Gol Khan. How are you doing? I'm very well, John. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and Gull is an international speaker, podcaster, barrister, and attorney, and a intuitive life coach, an EFT expert, an energy healer, healer, but most of all, a money mindset expert. Well, actually, not most of all, most of all, a mother, but most of all, a, <laughs> a uh, money mind, uh, mindset expert. And that's what we wanted to talk today about is changing your relationship with money. Um, so, Gull, this is an area that kind of you have made your own, this idea of mindset yeah. and money. Can you explain a little more about when you talk about a money mindset, what you're talking about? Brilliant. So let me introduce myself fully first. Yeah. I'm Gull Khan. And for those of you who have not met me before, I am a money mindset expert. And as a money mindset expert, I help entrepreneurs to break free from the limiting beliefs, reverse their money shame, and to blast through the money blocks using my unique energy tools so that they can live a life of a limited abundance. And this is one of the topics, my favorite topics we're going to talk about today. It's how to actually recognize and then change your relationship with money. So this is what we're going to be talking about today because I'm super excited about it and expect that to share with you. And I'm sure because it's something that I've designed and actually worked through through my journey and um, we haven't got time to talk about my journey at the moment, yeah. but for those who, when they, if they go on and listen to my podcast and so forth, you'll understand, you'll listen where I got to, why I got to here and how my journey from being a barrister, because not only am I a barrister with the Middle Temple in the UK, I'm also duly mm -hmm. qualified with, um, I'm one of the rarities, I'm a fully qualified solicitor with the England and Wales uh, Law Society. And I'm a fully qualified New York bar, uh, New York bar, uh, New York, um, attorney because I'm, I'm associated with the New York Bar Association. So wow. I am qualified in three jurisdictions, yet I practice in none, and I practice fully in the oh, well, yeah, as, a, as a money, as an energy healer, as a money mindset expert. And this yeah. is my favorite topic. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, let's get straight into it because you said you mentioned something interesting there in your preamble about you know you work with entre entrepreneurs and this money shame idea. So let's yeah. let's get into the whole mindset because people have funny attitudes to money and yeah. and kind of like almost like two people no two people have exactly the same kind of attitude. No, that they don't. But what you find is when you just get to the core, the underlay and the undercurrent of every single person, they're pretty much the same ideas that everyone's been fed onto. Keep in mind, we have been programmed to think about everything in a certain way from the ages of zero to seven. I mean, psychology mm -hmm. teaches us that right. all your programming is done between the ages of zero to seven, 80% of it, and the rest 20% is between the adolescent years and maybe in the early 20s, but then it is done. It's like the hard wiring is done. Right. So if you have been given this program of how to see money and it's been handed down from your parents and from their parents and from their parents and generations beyond, unless there's a break in between and something drastic happens, then every, pretty much every single person has very similar ideas, especially on depending on which which you know which uh, sort of social class they belong to. They may have migrated to the next social class, which is a rarity mm -hmm. as well in itself, and that's why the old uh, anchor, I mean, a rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Actually, it's based on your programming. You're programmed to stay poor, or you're programmed to get rich, and this is what we're going to tackle because a lot of people think, well, I'm just not lucky with money, or money doesn't work for me. It's actually your own internal programming, which you didn't have a choice in. In, in selecting, because you don't choose who your parents are. You don't choose who your primary caregivers are between the ages of zero to seven. Okay. You were given this. So now, but it's your responsibility, one, to recognize it, and then two, to change it. Yeah, so, um, okay, so the first thing is with anything is obviously recognizing it. So, yes. you know, how do you help people through that process of, of recognizing it? Great question. So that's very easily done. And I'm, I'm a, even though I'm an energy healer and I work with, with you know, with um, metaphysical, uh, you know, energy and so forth, I'm a very practical girl. I think this is where, because I'm a banking finance, mm -hmm. so I, you know, in a previous life, I think that's where I can't get my logical brain from, uh, mind, of, uh, mind from. So for you to understand in black and white what your relationship with money is like, regardless of what you think, regardless of the number of books you've read, you may have read Tony Robbins, uh, uh, Tony Robbins books, or you know Bob Proctor's, or um, you know Wallace E. Wallace, uh, or Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Regardless of what books you've read, okay, and regardless of what you think your relationship with money is, you would get a very black and white image or black and black picture of your money if you're looking back in account. The amount of money in your bank account will reflect to you truly what your relationship is like. And that's first of all. So that's practically what you want to look at. Secondly, 
if I just throw money at you, so what do you think about money? So think, tell me, what do you think about money? And don't give me the, the normal, you know, you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> the new age answer of money is wonderful, money is blessing. I want you to give me deep down honest answers. When, the, when somebody randomly uh, off the road picks up to you and says, well, what do you think of money? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I promise you, the average person would be rent, mortgage, mm. bills, credit card bills. I've got this payment going out. I've got that bill coming out. Oh my God, coronavirus is, uh, has been, this pandemic has happened. I don't know where I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know if I'm going to lose my job. I'm not, so I'm not mm-hmm. sure where the money is coming. It's all to do with how money's going out and how it's a stress on you and how it makes you feel mm-hmm. frustrating and hopeless and endless, uh, all these negative emotions. They will flood your, literally your, your mind is flooding with all the negative emotions and cortisol rises up and you're in the state of state, uh, stress, right? Yep. That is the average person. Now, regardless of, unless you've got millions in the bank, it doesn't matter who comes right. to me. So no, I think money is freedom. I say, hang on a minute, tell me, wait, this is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and I can prove it because I can show the banking app, right? The banking app yeah, is there yeah, to back yeah. me up. So that's the first thing to recognize. Be very honest with yourself. I'm not here to judge. You're not here to judge, John. Mm-hmm. Be honest with yeah. yourself. You know, these be, everyone who's listening right now, be very honest with yourself. When you think about money, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Everything that you... Well, you know, in terms of if you get rid of it, right? So if you how to get rid of it through rent and mortgage and bills right. and so forth. And that, and when you're paying those things, unless you're very, very, you know, centered and mm-hmm. have, have a, a sort of energy around it, most of the times you feel stress around this. You feel negative yeah. emotions around sending money out. You're always yeah. fearful, like oh, money's going out. I wonder if it's going to come back or how much is going to come back. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, no, it totally makes sense because I think exactly what you immediately think of is deficiency, right? You you think yeah. of, you know, you may think of bills or you may, if you said money to somebody, you may just think, yeah, I don't have enough. I, I just don't have enough. Or it's like halfway through the month and I'm already like half spent nearly all my money or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is. I think it's, um, I think you're correct. I don't think most people get a happy feeling when you mention money to them. And, no, and I no. think, you know, that's obviously, as you say, that's an inherited thing. And it's funny, like you say that, because it doesn't matter your circumstances, how different they are from maybe your parents' generation or whatever. Yeah. You, you still feel the same way because maybe you watch them be stressed. Uh, not only that, John, what you find is, and this is one of the things that I sort of, you know, highlight in my, my free challenges that I do. And in there, I, I talk people through in terms of recognizing, look, there's a matter in dollar amounts or pound amounts. You're maybe right. making more than your parents. If you mm-hmm. think about lifestyle choices and the kind of lifestyle you have, your lifestyle, 90% of the time, because 10% of people do the work, if you don't do any, any internal work, 90% of more than that, actually probably maybe 95% of people will have a very similar lifestyle to their parents. So in terms of the amount of holidays they have, the amount of liquid cash they have, the right. kind of assets right. they yeah. have, the kind of the kind of money they allow to into the into their mm-hmm. energy fields and to remain remember bringing money in is one type of energy keeping money and have investments and allowing it to grow is another type of energy so that is something else that people need to work on so hanging so becoming a millionaire is a different mindset becoming wealthy is another one yeah and i think that's a that's a really important a really important point but here's part of the thing i think where people's um relationship of money gets it goes askew is right is that they don't know what they need it for they don't know what they're doing they've never actually sat down and said you know how much money do i need or how much money would i like to have or what would i really use it for if i had it i mean sometimes you think oh i'll be great if i like had millions tomorrow i buy a boat but in in real practical terms like really understanding where are you going and how much do you need to get there that is very, very true. And that is, I think that's past true for, for a lot of people. But what I find is people who come to me actually have a good idea what they're going to do with money. They do know what they want because these are people who've actually gone mm-hmm. through, you know, the Bob Proctors and, 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 right. and gone to some, done some NLP or done some EFT work, immersion freedom technique work, have like, are aware of the fact that, okay, if I have, that's my money goal. And if I have this amount of money, I'm going to do this, 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 and with it. Yet, you know, and regardless of how talented and amazing these people are, they're still not able to break the income threshold. And yeah. even if they do break the income threshold, they, they you know, they, they compensate by health and relationship issues. And usually what they'll do is they'll overwork. Yeah? Right. So these are all the things that comes up. Now, the best thing is 
you know, for you, we're still recognizing money, your relation with money. The problem is most people see money as a piece of paper. They see money mm-hmm. as um, as piece of paper or something to use and abuse, like tissues or whatever. Oh, I don't need money. I just want to be happy. Oh, I don't want money. I just want to be happy and content and I want to mm-hmm. love what I do and I have, want to have a health. Okay, I want to be healthy. There's nothing in the Bible or any of the literature which says, you know, which that, you know, wealth is mutually exclusive from being happy or healthy, not at all, right? So people actually don't give energy that respect that it requires. And that's why I say, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been, as a lawyer in the past, I've now become an advocate for money because I'm teaching people not to have the greed or the need for money, but to have respect for it. Okay? Right. And this is very important. And as a piece of paper, you cannot respect money. I mean, how can you respect a piece of paper? Honestly, it has to, how does you try? You can't. But And how can you respect gold coins or silver coins? These are inanimate objects. These are, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're, they're not organic, they're inorganic. And how can you connect with something which is inorganic, right? Because we are living mm-hmm. creatures. So this is where we need to step away from our normal way of thinking about money, about everything else, and go down to quantum physics. Now, quantum physics teaches us this, and I'm going to assume that everybody knows this, that everything at its core is energy. So my voice at the moment is energy. Our thoughts are energy. My hair is energy. So physical and non-physical objects, everything in between is all energy, which right. means so is money, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if money is energy, then in order for me to change my relationship with energy, what we need to do is start seeing money in a different way. And this is where I I came up with the idea of having a money avatar. Now, when you have a money avatar, Mm -hmm. you are actually, you know, first of all, imagining what money would look like if it was your best friend. Now, tell me, John, when you have your best friend, you know, it doesn't matter how amazing that person is. If you become needy, like, oh, for example, give the example that his name is uh, Sarah. So if you're Sarah is one of your best friends and you say, Sarah, please come, please come. I really need you. There'll come a yeah. point where Sarah feel, you know what, John, I'm a bit busy <laughs> today. You know, it's okay. Can yeah, we exactly. meet tomorrow, the day after? You know, she'll feel suffocated, right? Yeah. On the other yeah. hand, you pick up the phone and say, Sarah, I haven't seen you for a girl. You know, let's go out for a, you know, let's go for a coffee or lunch or whatever. Let's just go and catch a, you know, chat and whatever. And you meet up and have an amazing time. And then you know that Sarah's there. If you need Sarah, Sarah will turn up. If you need her mm. to be there for you, she will turn up. If you need the support, she'll turn up before you need that you you, you know that right. she needs you, right? So she's intuitive, she's amazing, and she's got your back. So she'll turn up when she needs you, but she has to go from that lunch to wherever she needs to go. So hence the ebb and flow of money. Money comes, money goes. You're happy receiving Sarah because you're, oh my God, you're so amazing. I so love you having you there. But when Sarah has to go to X, Y, and Z, you're like, okay, Sarah, I'll see you soon. That is the attitude we need to develop. And unfortunately, you can't develop that with piece of paper. Whereas if you change your way of looking at things and think, okay, Sarah is this amazing, sexy, sassy woman or a a guy, depending on whoever pops into your head. I have people, you know, all all walks of mind. Everyone's different. Mm -hmm. Whatever your subconscious mind throws up as your ideal friend, that's your your, uh, money avatar. For me, for me, it's... um, I, I, ironically, my mine is a female, but it's not Sarah. She's uh, Michelle. So Michelle is a sexy, sassy, um, you know, Greek goddess-looking, amazing woman, and she is funny as hell. And she's, you know, at times behaves like a bimbo, like I do at times, but she's really, really funny. And she's my best friend. She comes and sees me, supports me, always turns out before I need her help, and then leaves when she needs to because she has to go to other places. But I'm always taken care of. I never have the greed. To have her, it's, um, to Michelle or Sarah, whatever you want to call it. I never have the need to hoard her. I never have the need to lock her up in a room and cage and make sure she never leaves. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's a yeah, completely yeah. different energy when you start treating money as, you know, if you personify money and start treating it as your best friend. Because I promise you, John, when you start treating money with love and respect and not greed and need, money starts showing up in your world in ways you cannot even imagine. Yeah, and it's such an interesting. It's I love what you're saying here because it's such an interesting concept. Is to is to obviously personify money, but also to realize that that when money goes, sometimes it goes because it needs to go at that moment. Did you just need to say, okay, see you, money? Uh, I'll see you when I need you, or you'll be back, or maybe we'll hang out later and we'll have some fun or whatever. But but not as you said, it's very different from that other perspective where anytime money goes out it's like oh my money you know oh, yeah, I, have, exactly. I have to pay that that money's going out and you think somehow and I think a lot of it comes doesn't it from um whether you have an abundant mindset I think that's the other part about it absolutely absolutely it does 
But I find people have, um, they, they, they can work on themselves. They can work on themselves and having, mm-hmm. you know, okay, there's more than enough wealth in the world. There's more than enough everything in the world. But when it comes to money, because I work with a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs and these are service-based um, coaches and consultants and even you know, online and offline entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I find that they have their mindset of everything's correct. But when it comes to money, they're just not able, they're not able to, you know, push forward. And this is yeah. why, because they, they have this negative relationship, they don't even recognize because a lot of times when you read books, you're like, oh, this makes sense. When you read Think and Grow Rich, you're like, oh yeah, I want to think about money in this way. I want to think about wealth in this way. What Read wealthy Waddles, you know, the science of getting rich. You're like, okay, so there's, you know, we understand logically everything they say and agree to it, but we don't right. internalize it because our subconscious programming is so deep that we go back to it. It's a paradigm. We go back to it. It's a fallback. Every time a disaster happens, everything like COVID-19 happened, we all go back into our old paradigm, old way of thinking and old way of behaving. And this yeah. is the biggest issue because we haven't actually developed a healthy relationship with money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, we immediately go into panic mode and mm-hmm. uh, and it doesn't matter. I mean, as you say, when things hit you from left field, it doesn't matter whether it's, um, whether you actually have a lot of money, you can somehow come up with a scenario where it all disappears suddenly, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, I always say there there are um, there are aspects. If you if you've just come into money because you accidentally fell into um, you know a, either a product or a service which had a demand and you made money because there are people yeah. like that who actually made money. Sure, like that. Yeah. They're not they're actually wealth wealthy by bank account, but not wealthy in their minds. That, that that's what I call mm-hmm. them. I think they're mentally poor. That's what the kind of people are referred to. But there are other people like like Richard Branson and someone like that. Now he has a rich mindset. I always give that idea. Because when I talk about my four different mindsets, that's another conversation for another time. But I would say if someone like that actually goes bankrupt tomorrow, and he could do, you know, things could happen. Do mm-hmm. you think within the next two years he'll be back up on top on the top of his game and back into having sure. all this money? Absolutely. Why? It's not his money which is giving him the, the security, it's his mindset. His mindset I remember yeah. I heard an old story, a video story which comes to mind. And it was where there was a bird sitting on a branch. And some, you know, I think one of the, the wise guys was one of these wise old men were talking to his grandchild and said, you know, what what do you think is making that um, bird, you know, quite calm and happy sitting on that branch, which is mm-hmm. quite thin and it's quite heavy, heavy bird. And um, and the, the the grandson said, oh, because it knows a tree is strong and the branch won't fail. And he said, no, it's because it knows if the branch breaks. It can fly off. Yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. surety in yourself which gives you the surety in your current situation or circumstances, not your circumstances giving you like, okay, I've got a million in the bank, I'm I'm safe. The bank can go bankrupt. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've had that a few years ago in 2007. I sure. think it was with uh, you know with um, you know, I won't give the names of the banks, but they yeah. they went belly up pretty much. So mm-hmm. this is that surety that comes when you know you have the right mindset around money and the right relationship with money, which is very, very mm-hmm. important. Yeah, because I always say to people is, um, you know, if you're doing all the right things, then just trust that the money will come. And and sometimes and sometimes you don't you don't know where it's going to come, but maybe it's going to come from a surprising place. But if you're doing all the right things, just trust that the money will show up. Yeah, that's so beautifully said. And I totally agree with that. If you are in alignment with your, what you desire and you're taking the right anxious... Um, yeah. You know, inspired actions, I like to call them. You know, you're aligned yeah. up and you're trusting. So this is where trust comes in. Trust, you trust in devices, energy, whatever name you give to device energy, universal energy, whatever. But when you trust devices, energy, that I'm doing whatever I need to do, I trust that you will send money my way. Money is amazing yeah. for me. Money is my best friend. You'll send money my way when I, as and when I need it. Money will come. It may not come from the actions you take and it may not come from the mm-hmm. business you have. It may come from unknown sources. But this yeah. is where devices, energy, you know, provides you, okay, yeah, okay, John, trust me. So I'll make sure I'll, I'll look after him. And that's where you get evidence from. And it becomes a spiral upwards where the yes. more evidence you get, the more you trust divine energy. Yeah, and vice versa. If you go the other way, um, then obviously yes. you get that result. And if you'd sort of go on, oh, screwed, nothing's gonna nothing's gonna bail me out. I can't see anywhere money's gonna come from. Well, guess what? It's not gonna show up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I have, I mean, there's one of the common thing I find with people is they're like, oh, I'm cool. I'm doing all the work. I'm doing the manifestation to other things. I'm doing this. I'm doing that, but money's still not showing up. And I'm mm. just sitting there looking, well, this is exactly why, because there's such thing as law of non-resistance and you're applying mm-hmm. it in your life. If you play applying resistance, like this has to show up and it has to show up now and it has to show up this way. You're putting all this resistance in the way of money showing yeah. up. 
Yeah. And to be honest, you're not really believing that it's going to. Exactly. That's when fear, so you know this fear in the back of your mind, being like, yeah. okay, when is it going to show up? And I've done the work, mm-hmm. so where are the results now? If you've done the result, if you, like, for example, I, I, you know, I've always been an A-grade student. If I know I've done well, I've done. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Yeah. Right? Now the results will show what I get or where I don't get. So I was probably one of the most relaxed people when I used to go and get my grades. And it wasn't because I was an A-grade student. It was because I didn't give a damn. What could I possibly do anymore? <laughs> it's done and dusted, yeah, yeah. right? If I fail, yeah, I fail. Yeah. If I don't, I don't. There's yeah. nothing you can do. That's where the trust element comes. And I was, because I was most, I especially remember when I went, we went for, for our Neo bar exams, because we're from the UK, we had to go to mm-hmm. Albany. So um, we, we all flew together. I, I studied together with a group of people, and I'm probably the one who's actually working with for, uh, Herbert Smith at the time. We flew up to Albany, and there were about 50 of us. And would you believe it? I'm probably the only one who passed both, <laughs> both exams, wow. and I was the most relaxed one in the group. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and it's not because I am any more intelligent than them. I just have adopted this philosophy of once you do it, let it go. It's not yeah. this. You have to have that trust element, do I synergy that it's going, whatever's best for you will happen. And it will come and show up in the most magnificent, magnificent, amazing ways. Yeah. And listen, I think it's a great way to um, finish up on Girl. That's fantastic. Um, listen, all of Girl's information will be included in our contributor bio. But before we go, please do remind people again what you do and how they can find out more. Thank you so much, John. So we, the best thing for you guys to do would be to join our challenge. We run these challenges, which are called Millionaire Mindset Makeover Challenges. We run them about three, four times a year. And the website for that is www.millionairemindsetmakeover.com. Otherwise, you can find me on my website, which is gulkhan.com, www.gulkhan.com. And I'm over social media as well. So with Money Mindset with Gulkhan. And my podcast as well, which is probably the best thing to listen to next, mm-hmm. which is Money Mindset with Girl Khan. That's fantastic. And I really, uh, I really encourage people to check it out because I do think that we live in strange times and strange times tend to stress people out. And money is one of the first things that you're starts to stress people out when things are a bit strange. So I would absolutely encourage you to listen to this. And I and I'll, I will attest to the fact that it's true. If you get your mindset right, if you really do all the right things, if you believe money um, will come. It'll show up when you need it for sure. Absolutely. And before as well, before you need it. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes even when you don't need it, which is even better. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.